Rinpoche, depression and, uh, and suicide. Although uh, Rinpoche, in your vast wisdom, has shared with us and offered us a fresh perspective of what we already have here in Bhutan in comparison to the world, this suicide and depression is rising. So what can Rinpoche again share with us? Thank you very much for asking that because this is something very important to me. Because in Bhutan, when I hear of students killing themselves, I feel very sad. Because, firstly, because of the tragedy of the, you know, that itself, tragedy. Second is because we being a Buddhist country. In a Buddhist country, as a Buddhist, suicide is not the end of the problem. Because we believe in the next life, pardo. So let's imagine that you think that at the end of your problem, you kill yourself. And then, you know, you realize you wake up in a pardo. And, you know, you can see all your family members crying, shedding tears. And, you have, and then there's next life. You have, it's not the end of the problem, maybe beginning of another problem. Yes. So, and also it is said that in the Vajrayana point of view, killing oneself is killing, equal killing a Buddha. Because in, within ourselves there is a Buddha. Yes. And from the Mahayana they say if you kill yourself, you have to kill yourself 500 times. So it's a very, from negative karma point of view, it's a very, you know, the spiritual point of view, it's very something negative. It doesn't solve anything. But more than that, from practical point of view, I have been, whenever I meet the students, I always tell them that whenever you make a decision in life, we should always do it with the wisdom and compassion together. So for example, when the students kill themselves because they didn't do well in the exam and because they love their parents so much, parents have so much hope and expectation, expenses, and they can't face it. So do the children have love? They have love. Love for their children, that's why, parent, that's why they can't bear to face them. Yes. But do they have the wisdom? Definitely not. Because yes, it is true that the parents will be very upset for one or two months. But if you kill yourself, the parent will be suffering for the entire life. Even if you cannot become a graduate, first of all, that doesn't mean that you may not be successful. I heard that Albert Einstein failed his class eight or something and still become genius. There are many businessmen like that. And even if you cannot become a great businessman of success, as long as when the, your parents are getting old, you can be there to love them, take care of them. At the end of the day, that's what we all need, love and care. So that shows that love is there, but wisdom is not there. Wisdom to see far behind, far beyond, and the consequences are our actions. Yes. And I think some kill for, because of relationship problems, right? Because of, you know, I don't know, boyfriend, girlfriend problem. That also, again, love is there. But the, I think the wisdom is not there very much. From the Buddhist point of view, first of all, I think that uh, Buddhist point of view, we have to know that every relationship is bound to separate sooner or later, is impermanent right? at the end of the day, even if it's 30 years. Second is that not only is physical separation, but emotionally also relationship is impermanent. Even if you are successfully coupled for 50 years, does not mean that your relationship is not impermanent because relationship is emotion. Emotion is thoughts. Every second our thoughts are changing. So relationships are always constantly changing. Maybe deeper, maybe not so deep. It is something that cannot be, you know, it is, it, by nature it is impermanent nature. Yes. We don't have that wisdom. Also we don't have the wisdom that relationships are very, one of the great source of being happy, definitely. But it is one of the source. After you have relationship, if you don't have a job, if you don't have family, if you don't have some spiritual sense of you know, the contentment, you cannot be happy. It is one of the important things in life. It's not the, the whole thing. Yes. And, but the most importantly, I feel, is that, again, the <laughs> it sounds like I'm criticizing the media, but what I really mean is that the, the thinking of the, what do you call it, how the love is portrayed in a modern way. For example, I myself also for a long time, I really was taught that there must be something called that true love. You know? the modern says like, and the image of true love that we are taught when we read books and all of that, I mostly have learned from the books. It said that true love will be somebody who is the perfect for you, no flaw at all. Mm -hmm. So you know, like who will like everything you are taught, everything will match. Like, so it, when you really think about it, that sounds like a sangje. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> Is the Sanjay. Yes. So unless you are fortunate enough to meet a Buddha or something, yes. I don't think there is anybody in this world that's that perfect. 
So I think from my point of view, I think that whether it's true love or a good relationship, it's not between two perfect couple, but two imperfect people who accept each other's fault, forgives other, they leave the room for understanding and forgiveness. So again, all of these wisdoms are needed. Otherwise, probably we'll be searching for true love throughout the life, <laughs> never meeting one. <laughs> or we can make one. <laughs> we were speaking about the youth. And uh, when you are young, you tend to look at things in a very fatalistic manner. As you get older and you've been in one or two failed relationships, then you tend to understand that, oh, <laughs> love is not really uh, constricted to one person. <laughs> because you tend to feel that attraction to somebody else as well. <laughs> uh, on a serious note, again, uh, we spoke about suicide and depression. And uh, Rinpoche uh, very uh, wisely touched upon the fact that uh, if you were alone on this planet, then it might be a different matter. But you have family and uh, you have brothers, you have sisters. So um, my next question to Rinpoche is, uh, while uh, it's sad that somebody kills himself or herself over uh, relationships, maybe studies, the people who are left behind, la, the family members, uh, the father, the mother, the brother, the sister, husband, wife, children, uh, any uh, words of consolation from Rinpoche uh, to them? La? Again, I would like to speak one from a Buddhist point of view. Second, from a practical point of view. From a Buddhist point of view, we believe in a lejum day. We believe that as long as there is some connection between us, we can help the person even after they have died. So that is why I feel that, I don't know whether people really realize it or not, because it's so much part of our tradition. But the ceremonies that we do when people die, it gives a great sense of closure to us. I've met many people who say that, they feel like something like they couldn't have maybe not good enough relationship and they couldn't do anything later to for the they loved. So that's why they always feel sense of, I don't know, like couldn't do something for people they love and regret. Yes. And it haunts them for many years. I've met many of them. And when I ask them to do some prayer for a death, it, there's a big transformation in them. Mm -hmm. So as a Buddhist, we believe in the Lejum Day, we believe in the blessing of Buddha. So I think we should definitely believe that even the people we love has passed away. Definitely we will be helping them by doing those prayers, by giving to the poor, helping other sentient beings, doing our practice and dedicating them. And they will give us, a, it will help them also. It will give you also a sense of a closure. You can still do something for the people you have loved. I myself, I mean, I lost my mother when I was 11 years old. But even now, every time I go to a pilgrimage, I do, I remember her. I dedicate my prayers to her. It gives me a sense of joy. And hopefully it will benefit her also. But you know, I feel that that is a, from the Che point of view, it's like that. From practical point of view, I think that after doing all the things necessary from spiritual point of view to the loved one, doing whatever, it is important to get over it. Because I don't think that even though you may have lost one son or a daughter, you have other children too. You have wife, you have husband, other people. If you get obsessed over one thing for the sake of one person, you will be causing suffering to many other people in your life. You will probably be not giving them enough love, attention. You will also be forgetting to appreciate that they are in your life. And as a Buddhist, we believe also that there is a pardo. So in the pardo also, when they see the people we love are going through so much suffering caused by them, I don't think they will be very happy. So I think that from a practical point of view also, once you have done everything to get over it, to forgive yourself, know that nobody in the world can control others' destiny. We all are you know, the ownership of our own karma. You know? Maybe we are, it's our negative karma that we are going through this suffering, but it's not our doing that other person. You know, it is their own kind of you know, the karma. So I, don't, I think we should get over it also Look around the people who are in our life and make sure that we appreciate them. This should be a lesson to love and care for the people who are in, in our life more. That, I think, should be the focus. Otherwise, I have heard and that you know, sometimes these suicide and this event destroys the relationship, existing relationships of the family. I've heard about that. I don't know Bhutan, but in general, I've heard about that.